Oh, welcome back to theCUBE as we continue our coverage here at AWS reInvent 22. We're of course in the Venetian here in Las Vegas. It's Wednesday, day I guess two and a half mm -hmm. of the show. Things are going really well here. And uh, we're going to move uh, our attention now to banking and tech. Um, like so many other verticals, that financial industry making huge moves uh, with their digital plays. And we're going to talk about that with a couple of guys that know what that is all about. Ken Meyer, Chief Information and Experience Officer at Truist. Ken, good to see you, sir. Good to have me, thank you very yeah, much. It is, and Heis Hyman, who is the principal at Deloitte, uh, the lead, though, for Converge Prosperity. We'll explain that in just a second. Heis, good to see you as well. Nice. Yeah, awesome having me. All right, so jump in on that for Converge Prosperity so we understand what the product is and or what the opportunity is uh, for what Deloitte brought to market for what folks like Truist are putting into practice. Yeah, so Converge Prosperity is really our focus where we're building solutions, production-ready solutions for the financial services industry. So if you think about the demand in the bank side right now is they want to launch new products, new services, you know, those innovative products and services that they want to take to market. And they also want to modernize, you know, a lot of their, you know, sort of legacy infrastructure and modernize some of their components within their architecture. Mm -hmm. So we, together with AWS actually, you know, are co-investing sort of in a multi-year strategy where we're saying, let's build these solutions that, are, that we can take to market that can sort of help these banks be more agile, launch products faster to market, and also help address the, the modernization you know, journey for the banks. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's really sitting within the Converge Prosperity Business Unit within uh, Deloitte. And Ken, for you, what was, the, what was the attraction, or what is the attraction in terms of, of that kind of an offering? Well, I think when you think about the banking journey to the cloud, a lot of folks look on the channel experiences, mm -hmm. and they've leveraged cloud to create yeah. differentiated experiences that are just, you know, they couldn't build before with the speed and the mm -hmm. scale and, the, and everything else. But the, the challenge is that many banks have is once you get below that layer, there's a lot of legacy type technology that, that lives in the product uh, uh, offerings that, that we all offer. So the idea of these folks or others that are trying to make that a little bit easier mm -hmm. to kind of connect that front end to that back end all with the true modern stack is is something that's differentiated. Yeah, if I uh, hear pulling this big old weight along with mm -hmm. me, right? That's right. I've got all this old stuff, but I still have to use some of the old yeah. stuff. Well, and some of the old stuff works, right? It runs, right. so right. why you know why would you want to mess up anything that's running? And so. Even that, you know, if these folks and others can find ways to start breaking it into more modular pieces so mm -hmm. we can consume things differently than we've done before versus take that big old elephant on every time, mm -hmm. it's, it's a differentiator. So what's the trick then in making sure that what is new is working with what is old? Because uh, what is new these days, obviously, you know, faster, sleeker, uh, I mean, we can go on and on as opposed to what you were working with in legacy. So, yeah. so what's, what's the trick there, Heiss, in, in making sure that uh, I think you're, you're doing the right matchup? It's part of the approach. I mean, we, you, know, you can either do a big bang approach, which is sort of lengthy and high risk for the bank, which is obviously, we don't see a lot of appetite in the banks to take the big bang approach or the, the large transformational approach. And then the approach that we sort of take to this is to say, and that we're seeing that success in the market is around more a phased approach, which we call on the edge is really to say how can we you know, launch something on the side you know, and take that to market really quick to show the benefit to the business and demonstrate success and at the same time have a really sort of modular architecture that you can say you don't have to have this monolith you know, solution that you need to plug mm -hmm. or replace your existing one that you can really sort of componentize that and say which are the components that we want to start replacing in a phased approach you know, with these new next generation technologies. Which yeah, the, the part that he mentioned there at the end on modular architecture is 100% mm -hmm. the key, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, architecture matters probably now <laughs> more mm -hmm. than ever. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're trying to, to stitch all of these things together and you can find ways to make it a little bit more seamless versus some of the, the monoliths that we've dealt with in the past, mm -hmm. it's, it's extremely helpful. So, so give us some, some examples here for, for what your experience has been then. Yeah. I mean, you are, as I see, you're, you're the experience officer, so. Uh. <laughs> yeah, we're, we'll, we'll leave that one alone. Uh, but no, I mean, I think some of the, the on the edge stuff that, that Heiss has been talking about, you know, we, we're, we're a large bank, we have subsidiaries, we have a subsidiary uh, which is our national lending platform and Lightstream as an example, and we decided to say, hey, let's really learn from what we could do with a, a more modern core banking platform. And we ultimately stood that up in production and we're 
we're close to going generally available, but mm -hmm. we've got production accounts on modern core platforms that mm -hmm. we're learning every day from. So, mm -hmm. you know, and it's not just the learning on the tech side. That's the, that tech side might be the easy part, yeah. to be mm -hmm. honest. The, the, the change in this technology and the different technologies that are available, it really is impacting how we run our operations. Mm -hmm. So moving from batch processing, which is always been how banks operate to mm -hmm. this concept of real-time processing. Yep. Yep. That's a big step. And not only does it change in the operations and how we service our clients, but now you got to think about compliance, mm -hmm. right? And, and legal and all of the, the risk elements security, of changing yeah. security. Right. All that. It's all, it's all a part of that change. So you, know, you could say that the tech is really hard and it's difficult and yeah. we got to look at the architecture, but at the end of the day, it's about bringing the entire organization back to the table to say, how do we do this different? And how do we create a better experience and create new value for our clients through the technology? All right, can you give yeah. me an example though, I mean, about some, what, what's going to be the biggest change you think, Ben? I, I think operationally is the biggest change, okay. in my opinion. I mean, when you start thinking about the way in which we've worked for years around this concept of batch processing. so. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, you make a deposit at your branch and that's really nice and we might credit you and you do the memo post and it's, but it doesn't clear until the night runs and you finish your batch process at yep. you know, 3 a.m. and then all your downstream systems run and all of that and even the concept of collecting checks, right? And mm -hmm. thinking about all the item processing aspects of that. When you start talking about real time and it immediately, you know, you make your deposit and immediately balances your general ledger and it mm -hmm. clears and it's all right there yep, at that yeah. point in time. All of those processes go away, mm -hmm. right? The, the batch processes change. The way in which all the downstream impacts for reporting and analytics and all of those things, it all changes. Mm -hmm. And so that can be really scary, but it also can be really exciting when you think about creating yeah. new products and new services that are truly real time and, and changing the way in which we operate with our clients. So scary and exciting, right? A couple, yeah. a couple of, uh, of uh, moods or situations that maybe some folks in banking don't want to be in, right? Yeah. I, I don't like scary. Uh, I, don't like, I want, I want well, here. Change so, is scary for yeah. a lot of people, right? But, yeah. but there's an evolution in this business. Yeah, what are you seeing with your experiences in, in terms of- The other thing that it also creates opportunity to sort of, <clears throat> you know, to lay the foundation of how do you, you know, coexist between the old world and the new world and you know these modern technologies really allow you to sort of you know put a, a, a event driven platform in place to say yeah. you know understand that the banking world is fairly batch driven right now as per Ken's comment and also the broader banking ecosystem is still batch driven but it allows us to put a platform in place to say how do we coexist with that batch environment and the real time environment and the other thing that the banks are trying to do is they trying to work with an, a number of sort of the fintechs out there in the market, these leading, leading fintechs that are offering new products and services that they can embed into their offering and then offer as a service to their customers, you know, at the end of the day. But doing that with existing banking technology is, you know, is difficult because it's not as modular and it's not as open. We, in these next generation technologies and certainly, you know, the solution that we, that we, you know, building with AWS is really sort of that power strip or that fabric layer where we are allowing you know, fintechs to plug in easier into that ecosystem and into the bank's ecosystem as well. Yeah, uh, I think with Goldman Sachs, is that what I read? Yeah. Is that one that comes to mind of you know, repurposing and, and, and making it available to their client base? They're certainly building a, a platform model where they, you know, offering the, they bringing other ecosystem partners into their platform and then they're offering out to, as, as business services to their, their customers, yes. So Ken, how do you get buy-in on this? Uh, I mean, um, because, you know, it sure looks good on paper, right? Sure. But but when it comes to the time to actually execute and, and implement, you need, you know, buy-in from more than just the you know your slice of the business, right? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of different elements that come into uh, getting that buy-in and kind of making that leap and starting to experiment. One is um, our clients, right? So our clients are demanding new products, new services. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't they don't expect uh, things like maintenance windows and other things, like they want what they want when they want it. Right. Um, so if you're listening to your clients and they want more product innovation and they want everything available when they need it, that's that's clear. Mm. Um, cloud and security, have we've, everything that we've ever done when it comes to moving workloads or building experiences with the cloud 
has been by continuing to increase our security posture. Mm -hmm. So we can create a more secure environment and a more available environment because we have deployments that are spanning different regions and they're mm -hmm. continuously available. Mm -hmm. And the automation and the speed in which we can go to market, I mean, when you can create a new product and launch a new product in weeks versus months or mm -hmm. years in the mm -hmm. past, with all of the complexity and create simplicity, while also using modern capabilities to create intelligent experiences, mm -hmm. that is, that's a game mm -hmm. changer and it's, it's hard to argue with it. But I think the other part of it that's a reality is that we're facing a really interesting time where you know, there's not a whole lot of COBOL programmers laying around these days. Mm -hmm. And so at some point, there's going to be a, there's going to be a workforce issue. Skills mm -hmm. gap. Absolutely. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Looking at it with the, through your Deloitte lens, then, um, uh, I mean, that's a very real threat, right? Sure. Is it not to all of a sudden, not a regression, but certainly a, a delay in progress? <laughs> if, if there's, a, how do we overcome that as I far think, as training and skills yeah, and whatever? I, I, we believe that this on the edge approach also, the, the other benefit to the bank is it allows the benefit to sort of test and learn a little bit with these new technologies, these new, you know, cloud native cloud based technologies are very different, you know, different skill set that you need in the in the design side, in the build side, and also in the maintain and operate side. But it allows the bank to sort of take more of a phased approach and sort of get the training wheels around the skills, get comfortable around how these different platforms work and how do you slowly sort of phase that into the organization which makes a big difference. So what's the training part of that then? I mean, uh, what does that look like? It's, it's training at the engineering level to say there are a new set of tools, you know, at the, at the, if you think about the cloud, the infrastructure layer, those technologies are very different, you know, from, you know, servicing the on-prem, you know, technologies that the banks are used to servicing. So that's certainly at the engineering level, there's a difference in training, but there's also a different training required at how do you configure and work with these new next generation, you know, uh, core platforms, which opens up a whole set of opportunities of what are the types of financial services products that the banks yeah. can take to market, but they work very differently than your sort of your traditional more monolithic you know, technologies. And then I think the bigger area, as Ken mentioned, is on the servicing side. You know, the bank has now got to say we are now introducing a new solution together with the old solution and how do we coexist and how do we create a servicing layer for the customer to have that sort of consistent experience across old and new, but also, you know, your middle office and your back office and your front office, you know, people have got to work on this platform and how do you not give them a broken experience in that? Well, and your know. clients don't care about what your black end platforms look right, like, that's yeah. right. right? So, you want to be able it's got to it's do gotta it on be the seamless. Device, right? It doesn't Make matter what, it. if right. it's 100 years old or yeah. if it's 10 days old, yeah. it doesn't matter, right? Right. Yeah. right. Um, you talked about the modular configurations, right? Um, are, are, are some more critical than others? I mean, not knowing you know, what, what that looks like, or, or have you been able to give feedback to on the converged prosperity side and say, you know, fine to I give here, find a lot of feedback. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we won't do his review right now. All right, all right good, all right, so what's not No, I, I, I think that, that we've, we've done a lot of learning together throughout yeah. all of these processes, because before they had this really fancy converged prosperity thing, we were just working together, yeah. right? right? And we've, uh, we've been able to learn along the way and there's some learnings that are great for us and there's other things that they can tailor for a broader set of clients, which is great. I mean, that's what, that's what the partnership's about is continuing to learn together. And, and Heiss and his team have been uh, phenomenal partners as we think about being very, very intentional about how we launch products on these new platforms. And mm -hmm. we give a lot of feedback on, hey, these are areas that might be really important for you to think about as you look to build out your side of the platform. Mm -hmm. And some of those things we might consume, some of those things we might yeah. not. Mm -hmm. um, and that's okay, but, but for us, it's, it's about truly partnering and doing that test and learn and trying mm -hmm. to learn about how, to, how does this impact all of the downstream stuff because mm -hmm. It, you know, it's not just about technology, although, mm -hmm. you know, we <coughs> like to think it is every <laughs> once in a while. Uh, this is about clients. Yep. And so, mm -hmm. you know, you got to continue to put them in the front. And then similarly, 
our teammates that we have because mm -hmm. they're servicing those clients on the mm -hmm. front lines every day. Yeah, they'll tell you if it's working. They will yeah. tell right, you. You'll know right away. And Absolutely. You can, you can see what shy. kind of use we have going on here and, 100%. and uh, if something's broken or not. Just real quick about the relationship going forward then. Like, you've launched Converge Prosperity, right? It's been out in the marketplace well, less than a year, but but you've you got it up and running. You know, mm -hmm. things are going well. Um, what, when you hear feedback like this from Ken and others, uh, what kind of fine tuning's going on in here with you? And then <coughs> from your side of the equation too, what do you want more of? What do you want to see sure. more of here in, the, in 2023? Yeah, I mean, I we, we really, I mean, we work with sort of the non-traditional banks out there. So um, we work with FinTechs that want to launch banking offerings. So, you know, there are a lot of lessons that we learn from them in terms of, you know, what are the features and capabilities that they're looking for. We work with some of the, um, you know, the, the larger banks that are saying, you know, we want to be more modular in terms of how we how we consume the banking suite solution. We don't want to take sort of an end-to-end -end proposition. We really want to take selective components of that banking suite solution and embed it into our existing or new infrastructure. Um, and I think the lessons for us is really just around what are the new customer capabilities that you know their customers are looking for that we should be building for in our platform. Mm -hmm. um, I think the other thing that you know you need to look at is these new you know next generation core banking platforms they are like any you know new software business they are growing they are learning and they are maturing so you're also looking for customers that have the appetite you know to grow with some of those and whose product roadmap aligns with the, you know those vendors out there. So uh, I guess for us it's important to work with partners that are willing to work with us and you know walk that journey but we also feel that these technologies and solutions are really you know banks are moving past design past thinking they are really now thinking about how do we start implementing and making it real mm -hmm. and how do we take that initial use case sort of to to market out mm -hmm. there yeah I I would say you know if I simplify what Heist and team have done they've taken modernization of commodity services right so Banks don't want to just go out and build commodities all the time, mm -hmm. right? That's not how we're going to differentiate. So we need to be thinking about what are the different ways that we can create a competitive advantage against everybody else who has mm. you know, a lot of different and similar products and uh, service offerings. So if we can continue to look and help influence roadmaps and also consume some of those types of services that mm -hmm. are truly commoditized uh, and we can go focus on the modernization of the areas that are the biggest possible competitive advantages for us, mm -hmm. then there's a lot of value in that type of value prop. Sure. Um, I know we didn't have time for this, but uh, do you have a pick, by the way, in the national championship in college football? I'm a, I'm a dog. I know you are. I'm a dog. <laughs> How about them dogs? How about them dogs? All right, thanks for the time, guys. Thanks. Uh, really do appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, really great session. Talking about bank and uh, banking and what's going on at the bottom really is AWS, uh, you know, driving things and making it happen. All right, you've been watching theCUBE, of course, the leader in high-tech coverage.